Good afternoon, everyone. Happy to have you at our earnings call for the second quarter of FY24. Retail sales has been resilient and maintained gains year to date 2023. Brands have been able to sell their products at full price, reducing the need for discounts, which has contributed to growth primarily in terms of price rather than volume. However, this is not translated into a higher demand for apparel manufacturers. U.S. apparel imports for the year to date fell by 23%, while EU fell by 13%. Major brands were consciously liquidating excess inventory holdings and controlling their purchases. During the quarter, our performance remained subdued, which was in line with the market condition. This is a period when we manufacture for the holiday season, weak retail demand in autumn winter 2022 due to high inflation, high interest rates, and a mild winter contributed to excess inventory impacting uptake for this period. Our revenue for the quarter came in lower by 11.7% due to lower demand. In this quarter, we incurred certain one-time expenses of 5.2 crores, of which 1.6 crores was for acquisition-led expense and 3.6 crores was for the startup of our MP plant. As you know, when we start up a factory, we, uh, we have to ramp up our manpower and put a lot of people through training, and there's a lot of startup expenses that we incur, which will uh, probably continue for a quarter more, quarter or two more. Uh, on the acquisition-led expense as well, there may be some uh, additional uh, bookings of uh, acquisition-led expense in the next quarter, too. This uh, 5.2 crores of one-time expense impacted our operating margin by 1%, adjusting for which our EBITDA margin in Q2 FY24 stands at 12% compared to 12.5% in Q2 FY23. We also ramped up our labor force in Q2 in preparation for third quarter business volume, resulting in an increase in wage cost by about 5 crores. Further, our operating margin was impacted by an increase in statutory wages for factory employees. We continue to offset some of the cost increases through superior operational performance. In the first half of the year, we generated 113 crores in cash from operations and covered our capital expenditure of 70 crores. We plan to incur another 75 crores of uh, capital expenditure in the second half of the year to continue to build up our capacity as we plan for future growth. Our new manufacturing unit in Madhya Pradesh is on track, and we expect production to increase in the coming quarters. The fabric processing unit in Tamil Nadu is in advanced stages of completion as well. We are making good processes with our acquisition of Atraco. We are awaiting regulatory approvals from different jurisdictions and anticipate the process to be completed by end of Q3 FY24. We are expecting the momentum to pick up in the second half of the year, particularly with Q3 production for spring 24, as brands have more or less destocked their inventory and are, and are increasing their order placements. This is also a period of increased sourcing from India. We anticipate sequential growth to trend up in the next two quarters. We believe that the strategic moves that we are taking <coughs> will allow us to continue to grow the business going forward. <coughs> Excuse me. We continue to closely monitor potential macroeconomic situations and take measures focusing on customer relationships and service excellence. We are confident of the medium to long-term prospects of the company. I thank you for listening and would be happy to address questions that you may have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jatin Chawla from RTL Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, um, the first question is, uh, when I look at, uh, you know, our export uh, performance uh, in and compare it with overall uh, India's export performance, it seems we are largely doing in line. Um, I would have expected that in a... Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chawla. Sir, can you use the handset mode while speaking and not the speakerphone? 
Is this better? Much better, sir. Thank you. Please yeah. proceed. Yeah. So uh, my question was, if you, when I uh, compare uh, Gokul Das exports uh, and uh, Ita overall exports, apparel exports, it seems uh, the performance is largely in line. I would have expected that in this uh, kind of weak scenario, the stronger, larger players would probably do better. Uh, so just wanted to understand why is that not panning out. Okay, good question. So there are several reasons for it. Uh, one of the reasons is that, uh, you know, we, the, the primary reason is that we are a very outerwear focused company. And we, in the second quarter, we do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of products which are meant for holiday season, for cold weather uh, purposes. That's, that's, uh, that's a core product for us. Last winter was a very mild winter and coupled with a very high degree of inventory stocking on the brand side resulted in uh, the brands placing very low orders for outerwear products uh, for this uh, coming winter, that is winter of 2023, uh, holiday season 2023. So this resulted in our Q2 volumes being more impacted as we don't do as much fashion wear uh, and, and other, uh, you know, lightweight products or commodity products. So, so we had to switch to many other product types for this Q2 to offset this peculiar situation of, uh, of, of higher inventory stocking of the product types that we tend to specialize in. So that's one of the reasons uh, for, for our, uh, you know, decline in growth, which was, which came certainly in line with, uh, with the, uh, uh, with, with India's destocking, you know, in India's uh, exports. Number two, we are U.S. heavy, and as you are aware that U.S. imports have fallen much more than European in imports, so that also impacted us uh, a bit more in Q2. And uh, number three was, you know, if you look at our last year Q2, uh, we had a very strong performance, much, much higher than the rest of the industry, so there is also a base effect uh, which uh, which resulted in us coming more or less in line with the uh, with the industry uh, you know decline. So if you adjust for all of this, actually we have performed well. But you know that said, uh, you know this you know if you seek an explanation, this is this is what I have. Understood, understood. But uh, so clearly I understand the prototype uh, dependency. Uh, overall, you would think that in the market. Uh, the larger players would still be, still be doing better than the smaller players, and and once this anomaly kind of adjusts, uh, we should expect to do better. Always, always, absolutely. Got it, got it. And given that how small um, you know India is as a part of the overall global pie, uh, is it a little bit surprising that Indian uh, exports are not doing? better than, I understand that overall conditions are tougher and India is doing slightly better, but would you would you have expected India to do slightly better uh, than what you've done in the last 12 odd months? So, you know, again, Q1 and Q2 is not India's strength. Uh, Gokul Das is different. We do a lot of synthetics and outerwear and all of that. But typically, India plays to its strength in the sec uh, third and fourth quarters when, you know, more and more spring and summer wear uh, comes into play. Uh, if they use cotton and viscose based uh, fabrics. So, so typically, you know, you will see a, a little bit of a surge in the third and fourth quarter for India as, as such. And in a, in a situation where the brands are buying a lot less, you know, then it, it, it's a question of, uh, you know, relative impact. The, uh, you know, the globally all the, uh, all the regions have seen considerable slowdown. So when I talk to uh, operators in Bangladesh, Vietnam, China, they've all seen a much uh, higher degree of uh, slowdown. So, so you know, in such a situation, it's hard for anybody to, uh, uh, you know, outperform. The fact that India has dropped only 12% is, is, is a good sign, I would say. Mm. And would you expect these market share gains for India then to accelerate a little bit once the overall market picks up, given that you know, then um, the guy who's sourcing would not be cutting volumes from somebody and giving it, but rather incremental volumes would be given. It should. Thing. It should. Some degree of, you know, I mean, the, the, the bounce back will, will benefit, uh, you know, at least the stronger players from India, for sure. 
and uh, you know we will have to build up on it uh, going forward okay one just one last question uh, you oh, said you would take them draft uh, mr chawla may we request that you return to the question queue there are participants waiting for their turn sure sure no thank you the next question is from the line of ganjan kabra from nevshai please go ahead uh thank you so much sir for the opportunity uh so wanted to understand that you know home textiles in the us has uh, you know showing the sign of pick up at least some companies are uh, showing the sign of pick up in their numbers so do you think that same is uh, the inventory has decreased now for the apparel segment also and how do you see this for the 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 next q3 and q4 and going forward for google that export So, so i think the inventory uh, you know issues going forward is a lot lower because many of the brands have managed to restock well and we, you know it is also evidenced by the fact that our order book is, is pretty good for the third and the fourth quarter so, so you know we are seeing traction coming back uh, you know if you see the us retail market that has been reasonably resilient and i hope that it stays resilient through 2024 so so it, that depends on a lot of macro economic factors but as far as the brand is concerned uh, all the all the buyers are concerned and their inventory issues are concerned i think we have seen some uh, you know these talking has more or less happened so it will help us in growth going forward okay okay so i also wanted to understand your view like in short term and long term like you know initially like like one and half year back uh, at least there was like a tailwind in the sector where you know india was gaining market share and because of the china ban and china plus one so right now the because of the slow down in the us and uh, the europe and everything so we are acquired atrico also and we are in expansionary phase also so i wanted to understand what's your you know vision for short term in you know what are the factors that can uh, maybe hinder growth uh, are an obstacle in short term and maybe the long term vision for gokulas in say next 2 to 3 years 4 years what kind of a growth or what kind of a perspective do you see with these two acquisitions going forward so i don't see too many short term interests barring you know macroeconomic factors and that's anybody's guess so, so you, know, you can also uh, judge uh, on how that is going to pan out if you look at the us interest rates have been kept high and they may be some impact on consumer sentiment going forward so far the us market has bucked all the trends and consumer demand has been reasonably resilient in that market we'll have to see how that pans out going forward there are elections in several jurisdictions us mexico uk india so on and so forth so we'll have to see how all of that pans out but by and large i think you know global demand doesn't have such wild oscillation so so my sense is that uh, you know the excess of inventory uh, which which happened when the supply chains tightened up and and then eased out all of that is more or less wearing off uh, you know so we back to uh, catering to the usual you know subtle demand growth that that will happen going forward so so some degree of normalcy will return to the market now in in such a scenario stronger players will have the ability to now win uh, win more uh, market share and continue to grow so going forward there will be a bit of a steadying of of the volatile fluctuations is what i what i guess and uh, uh, you know again everything caveated to some major uh, geopolitical crisis right uh, the, and and i feel that china plus one will continue to play out you know it's already playing out on the cotton sector but you know it will it will you know slowly start uh, happening in the other uh, synthetics as well uh, it will take a few years but that also will move as india's cost structures are far superior and we are exploring newer lower cost locations we are also looking at a possible fta with uk and if that happens that will be a great uh, benefit for india if uh, eu fta comes uh, which which will take some time that also will be a major uh, shot in the arm for the indian manufacturers so i i think that for a good solid manufacturer who can compete and hold themselves uh, at at a global level the uh, the opportunity is very strong uh, and that's the reason why we are investing in capacity we are making sure that the capacities that we are investing in are low cost 
we're investing in relationships uh, with new customers. So there's several discussions that are happening with customers. So, so I, 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 I feel confident that you know in the next two to three years, the uh, prospect uh, you know should be should be good for Gokul Das. Our Atraco acquisition has also uh, you know will also come into play most likely from uh, fourth quarter of uh, the current financial year and uh, the order book for that is also pretty uh, that that entity is also pretty good going forward so so i'm taking uh, you know comfort from all of these trends and saying that you know we should we should be on a good growth path going forward subject to no major macroeconomic crisis okay okay Okay, sir. I'll get back in the queue. Thank, Thank you. So and good luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anush Kumar from Spark Asia Impact Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I have two questions. My first question is on the export incentive part, where the ROCPL. Uh, I think the the extension is still March twenty four. What is your take on that? Uh, will there be any further extension on that? And if, if there is not any extension, and what would be the impact? Because considering the fact that we have put in a lot of money, what would be the margin and revenue impact uh, uh, for that? And second question, uh, can you also throw some ballpark growth for second half? Uh, will the subdued uh, uh, first half be compensated uh by second half performance both on revenue and margin front are you seeing that type of a growth okay so coming to roscpl your first question uh, at the moment roscpl is uh, applicable till uh, fy24 that is march 31 2024 there uh, you know the government of india has, is aware and uh, there have been discussions going on for uh, continued extension of roscpl we will have to wait for directions from the government, uh, you know, on, on ROSCTL. Since it's an industry-wide situation, the impact will be uniform for all the industry, and we will have to uh, play, play it accordingly. We will also have to see, uh, you know, how much of it we can price it into the customers. Eventually, it will all get priced in uh, as far as the customers are concerned. Uh, since it is not impacting one player, uh, in, uh, you know, negatively, there are also several other things going on globally. For instance, even in Bangladesh, there is expected to be a sharp wage increase by end of this year. So, so you know, all of these uh, do impact regional competitiveness, uh, and, and I guess we will have to take it on our side. Our best hope is that the ROSCTL gets extended beyond FY24. All efforts are being made by the industry to secure this. So, so we will have to wait and watch. But we are somewhat, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we feel that the government may listen to us, uh, listen to the industry favorably, given that this industry also employs a lot of people, and it is important to preserve the competitive economics of this industry. So there is a likelihood that this may get uh, extended. As far as your second question is concerned, regarding uh, the prognosis for the second half, our endeavor is for... Uh, us to recover uh, the the revenue growth in the second half and try to see try to come uh, to at least last year's revenue level this year. So, so if you look at our last year, we had a strong H1, and after that, uh, you know, when the world went into a tailspin thanks to high inventory, etc., we we started uh, dropping our revenues to about 525 crore level uh, from Q3 onwards. I think we will see a reversal of the trend in this year, and Q, uh, Q3 and Q4 we will we will see an upward growth, such that uh, by and large we will try to cover up the uh, the cover up and get back to the revenue levels of last year. So I, I anticipate us to get closer to 2,200 odd crores uh, in the uh, current financial year, and on top of it there will be a track of contributing to incremental revenue in the fourth quarter. So so overall. We will have a growth, uh, YOY, uh, you know, it, uh, for, for Gokul Das. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. one more question. Sir. So one more question on this. Uh, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sir, on this 
second half, uh, I think it is more of cotton-based products, which uh, can we see margin expansion as well? Is my assumption right on that? Yes, I think I think we we know our endeavor is to work towards the margin of twelve twelve and a half percent EBITDA margin and uh, yeah, for for the year. Yes. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, hi. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is with respect to our uh, uh, employee cost. Uh, of course, you mentioned that we did uh, increase our uh, uh, labor to prepare for the 3Q. But uh, can we like uh, go ahead and uh, uh, estimate that the 180 crore per quarter would be a sustainable run rate, or uh, it would be somewhere even an inch of higher going ahead in, in next quarters? So I think I think that that uh, 180 crores, 180, 190 crores will be the will be the rate at which uh, labor cost will trend in the quarter size. Okay, okay. Secondly, sir, uh, would you like to throw some light on how was Attraco's performance in the quarter? So, so uh, you know, we have not concluded the acquisition of Attraco. So Attraco still remains a separate uh, uh, entity. And we anticipate that with the regulatory approvals coming in uh, sometime in the near future, we should be able to conclude the uh, acquisition by end of this uh, current quarter, that is Q3. So as of now, the, the company is tracking to uh, its performance, and uh, you know it's, it's more or less tracking to last year's performance levels, uh, despite uh, market headwinds. So you know, but we are still not in control of the assets since. We have not yet got the regulatory approval. Understood. Understood. All right, sir. Thank you so much. I will come back to the question. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is, uh, what is the um, US FCA, uh, or sorry, UK FCA? Uh, what's the timing on that? Uh, has uh, it been pushed out, and what's the stance as to when that will come to? Rajesh, I, I wish I knew that, and uh, you know we're all eagerly awaiting for uh, UKFTA to happen. Uh, obviously, you know FTA is just one uh, FTA for textiles is just one of the agenda in the U India UK trade relations. So it's uh, government of India and the uh, UK uh, government are working on it. We are hoping that it should happen sometime soon. Uh, we are eagerly awaiting it, but it's hard to put a timeline on it. I guess a lot of those discussions have already happened. Uh, and that's what I am I'm given to understand. Uh, but as far as the timing is concerned, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess. Government of India uh, has its own set of priorities, and there are a lot of discussions going on between the two countries. Uh, and discussions are at a fairly advanced and you know concluding stages, is what I understand. Okay, and then similarly for the uh, Kenya uh, Kenya for uh, its uh, US FCA, uh, what's the timeline on that? When do you think that will come through? Kenya, you're talking of US FCA. Okay. Well, the US uh, deal that they have uh, for a tackle business. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I got it. Okay. So, so uh, Goa is valid till December 2025. So, so that discussion will come up only in the, you know, 20, in 2025. So there is some time for it. Uh, last time it was, uh, you know, extended from 2015 to 2025. The expectation which I hear from uh, Kenya and other markets are that it will get extended by another 10 years. So, so, so far it has been going in line. Uh, Kenya is also working on an FTA with U uh, U.S. because they are you know, geopolitically Kenya is very closely aligned with the U.S. So, so then regardless of Angola, I think uh, you know Kenya is expected to enjoy uh, preferential access to U.S. market. Uh, but there is a lot of time before uh, you know we can talk about Angola extension. Okay, okay, understood. And then on the MP plant, if you can talk about uh, when does it gets to 100% capacity and how the ramp up will look like in the coming financial year? I think to reach 100% capacity utilization, we are talking of uh, almost like uh, Q2 of next year. Uh, you know, they, they will continue to ramp up. 
our endeavor will be to ramp it up as soon as possible you know it all uh, is a function of how fast we can get the people trained and deployed on the floor and they reach their peak productivity levels uh, the, the it's not just about putting the manpower on the uh, you know in the floor or in, to the production floor but also getting their productivity up and that also takes another 6 months so i anticipate that you know we are talking of about some somewhere like next q2 by which time by end of q2 by, by which time we will have uh, the the productivity levels uh, and the full manpower complement to be uh, to be playing out got it all right thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of varun gajaria from omkara capital please go ahead uh hi sir and thank you for the opportunity uh hello am i audible yes you are thank you yes yeah, sir uh so i just had a i just i just had a question on uh, on on this on fy24 so uh earlier today i think in one of the interviews you mentioned that we we were to see 10 to 12% growth uh why why in fy24 uh am i am i getting that wrong is uh, is for if is the revenue the world be flat then how will that work out you're talking about fy24 right yeah 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 that is you know uh, the expectation as i mentioned a little while earlier our endeavor is to uh, come as close to last year's revenue ba- you know based on our current performance which is about 2200 plus crores and then uh, we we expect that a trico should contribute incremental revenue in the fourth quarter so that will give us you know an incremental revenue in the fourth quarter too so overall we you know we can expect about a 10% kind of uh, revenue growth uh, in 24 over 23 fy24 yes, so that will be a so consolidated basis uh, yes, yes yes of course okay okay that's it for my end thank you you're welcome thank you the next question is from the line of vikas from equiris please go ahead uh yes sir thank you for the follow up sir uh, uh, can you uh, uh, what what is the volume that the asp is for the quarter we have done 7.77 million and the asp per piece is around 610 rupees for the quarter for the quarter okay right 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 okay sir. okay and and uh, uh, going ahead since in h2 we generally do cotton based products so this asp generally uh, drops for the h2 quarter right that for is correct that is correct so as i had mentioned earlier in my, you know i the outerwear business was uh, a bit slow because of uh, the weather related issues and excess inventory from last year so so you know we we have uh, produced a lot more uh, non outerwear products in q2 Uh, which otherwise would have been a out of air heavy season for us so all of that contributed to slightly lower uh, asp uh, in the quarter and so uh, if i just uh, wanted to confirm that last that is 2 crore 23 our uh, uh, units or sales uh, volume was 6.7 million pieces with an asp of 850 is that correct q q2 as previous year correct you are right Okay sir thank you so much sir thank you the next question is from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmas Capital Management please go ahead thank you for the opportunity um my first question is just on uh, the kind of engagement you are having with clients i mean now that the uh, us inventory correction is behind i mean what is the level of uh, new client engagement how is that taking up quarter on quarter and and how's the conversation with some of the existing clients as they're looking to diversify the supply chain so are they saying in as many words to you that you know why don't you just go ahead and set up capacity so some softer discussions around the thing so seen so in the uh, the discussions with existing clients has been going strong and we have actually been uh, uh, engaging with them on you know starting new product uh, product lines or product types uh expanding the relationship with uh, other sub brands you know many of these retailers have several brands uh, that they carry 
and we may be supplying to two to three brands so you know we will we, we can add uh, you know incremental businesses so all of those discussions are going on uh, based on our track record our relationships and the fact that they tend to see that the inventory levels are now coming back to some degree of uh, normalcy going forward so so all of that all of that is going on so it's it's encouraging i i am i'm picking up encouraging signals as i see going forward the only caveat that i have is uh, you know i don't know how the uh, stubbornly high interest rates uh, will pan out going forward in the us uh, from a retail demand perspective because retail demand despite everything has uh, has kept uh, kept on growing uh, albeit at a lower rate but it's still uh, still positive uh, for the calendar year 2023 till date so i you know i'm, I'm i hope that the retail demand stays is good uh, going forward but uh, you know the, the the dialogue with the brands have always been uh, encouraging on top of it as if fta and all happens i think there will be further additional growth from europe uh, that will be a positive for us incrementally you know our uh, our customers are talking about expanding their relationships with us so so we seem to be uh, you know drawing comfort from all of that on this and and the second question is uh, on the gross margin front i mean uh, you are clearly taking a call of uh, you know uh, working only on slightly higher a uh, margin profile you know, at the you know at the cost of revenue growth now as growth is coming back how how is the pricing environment now do you do you have to sacrifice some bit of margins to get that growth or or, or are you seeing a good margin i mean at a gross margin level also that you know uh the, there is a there is a tight pricing regime uh, going on uh, as long as the buys are less than uh, you know less than the past there will always be a pricing pressure so so you know if demand is less than supply we will always have this issue so so buyers are uh, you know buyers have choices there are uh, players in other global markets as well who are willing to compromise on their margins and bid so while we try to hold on to our margins to the best extent possible it's it's a it's an uphill battle until uh, you know the there is a degree of normalcy from a demand perspective so as the demand climbs up some of these pressures will yield uh, or or you know will reduce but i i don't anticipate that happening any time soon we will see how uh, fy25 plays out i'm hoping that some sometime during that period we should we should see some degree of pricing power come back but in the meanwhile we we do not uh, you know drop prices uh, and chase revenues that's not in our dna so we will try to hold on to our margins to the extent uh, possible got it great thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of anurag agarwal from agarwal analytical investments please go ahead uh hi sir thank you for the opportunity am i audible you are uh sir i uh, noticed that in the, in our presentation we were focused towards europe and us for our export related business i just wanted to understand in future do we also aim to target other geographies like uh, probably canada australia or mina region probably see globally us europe and china are the top markets uh, from an apparel demand perspective lot of china's demand is uh, fulfilled by china based players so china produces for china so that really leaves uh, us and europe for players like us uh, from a uh, from a demand catering perspective we have been us centric in our approach so 80% 75 to 80% of uh, what we produce goes to the us uh, market europe is much smaller in our portfolio we intend to increase our uh, exposure to europe as we go forward uh, to balance the uh, uh, the the uh, revenue mix and uh, in anticipation of an fta with uh, uk uh, as far as australia mina and others are concerned they are much smaller markets and if if it suits us we will go for those markets but at the moment you know the overheads of a relationship and you know to cultivate those markets are are much higher to uh, to, to you know warrant efforts in that region 
got it so my question was was in this particular fee was due to this uh, due to the factor that we are seeing some kind of a uh, economic risk out there in us since you know recently i also read that credit card delinquencies have increased to 60% so this could have a potential impact on us like in the mean in in the coming time so that's why i thought if our company was uh, trying to diversify the geography base the the only issue is that you know the other markets are so much smaller if you look at population of australia yeah you know it, it it's a tiny fraction of united states uh, population you know so so the the problem with all of these markets that you mentioned are are way too small so so we have to make sure that we secure ourselves with the larger markets and uh, make sure that we work with the right set of customers so that we minimize our impact got it thank you sir sure thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one the next question is from the line of rehan from equity capital please go ahead hi sir thank you for the opportunity uh, as an earlier participant asked about ros ptl i think i missed on the same so what kind of margin impact do you expect if it doesn't get um, carried on by the government I I am sorry I couldn't understand your question your voice came a bit muffled um as an earlier participant asked about ROS CTL and you right. mentioned that it will be till it's currently till the 31st of March 2024 right. assuming the government doesn't carry forward that what kind of margin impact do you seem to face in the industry if you can share some light on this here also it's, it's a bit difficult to estimate at this moment uh, you know we we are hoping that it should come uh, you know it should it should get extended but uh, in the event it doesn't happen you know it it is not that we will take a 3 and a half to 4 percent 3 and a half percent or whatever we are getting as roi ctl that level of it maybe we will have to take a hit uh, at 50 percent of that level till we try to recover that back going forward so the recovery of that will happen by pushing back on pricing and all of that so so it will take about uh, two to four quarters before we recover it all back but in the meanwhile we may have to take uh, about half of half of that as a hit uh, i presume so that you so basically not some concrete level of margin impact we can see no so 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 ros ctl amounts to about uh, 3 and a half percent uh, of the export turnover which is bulk of our turnover right so so that's the 3 and a half percent ebitda margin sitting there uh but my uh, sense is that uh, it's a transparent thing the brands also know that rosctl is uh, is available to all the suppliers and to that extent it gets factored in the pricing so for whatever reason rosctl goes away there is a possibility of pushing that back into the uh, into the pricing uh, when when we when we do our calculations going forward so our endeavor would be to claw back uh, most of it but i'm presuming that in the in the interim for a short period we may have to uh, eat half of it and till we fully uh, claw back all of it okay thank you so much one 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 more question would be on the uk fta um the what if you can even share some light on the volume you expect that could die, that could india generate because of the uk fta versus the global competitors we have any like 10% to 10 to 15% you see as a ballpark figure so i anticipate it to be about a billion dollar opportunity uh, you know it's again anybody's guess but this is my assessment if you look at uh, bangladesh they export almost uh, 4 billion to uh, uk and china exports about 5 billion to uk uh, once we get a level playing field with bangladesh and india exports to uk about a billion or something like that so you know a portion of it at least you know out of 4 billion with bangladesh uh, exports if we get half a mil- half a billion and uh, china exports about 5 million and i am presuming that at least 2 billion out of that will be cotton based uh, and there we will be 12% cheaper than china because of uh, duty free access another half a billion coming out of it conservatively we can talk of about a billion dollar opportunity it can be even more uh, all depends on how uh, well positioned indian uh, uh, suppliers are to take advantage of the uh, of the fca economics will drive it and economic uh, rational is very compelling so i feel even a billion dollar is conservative approach a conservative estimate thank you so much sir you've been very kind
Thank you. The next question is on the line of Roshit Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, am I audible? Hello. Uh, you are audible, please go ahead. Well okay, sure. Uh, so, so uh, I broadly had two questions. So, first one was the challenges that we have highlighted uh, majorly seem external uh, from inflation, brand be talking, and US and Euro uh, reasons why having economic challenges and so on. So I just wanted to ask, like, is there anything specific that uh, we see uh, which could be related to Gokul Das, uh, either from education perspective or anything that is uh, company specific to us that we are uh, working on? I, I, I'm not sure I fully got your question, but if you're asking if there are any challenges that you see company present, yes, yes, correct. Uh, you know, I don't see anything directly or immediately impacting uh, Gokula specific, uh, you know, from from a challenge perspective. Uh, you know, we we have uh, a fairly stable set of operations, a stable set of customers. Uh, I, I don't see any any risk from from that standpoint. Uh, it's just that we have a little higher uh, presence in the south of India where costs are high and uh, labor costs, you know, slowly will keep inching up. So over a period of time, we will have to diversify our uh, manufacturing operations to access other lower cost labor pool. So, so, so it's only to that extent. The good news is that, uh, you know, the labor costs are only increasing in China, in Vietnam, and even in Bangladesh going forward. So, so from that perspective, you know, while, while there are certain challenges of labor availability and labor costs in South of India, I don't see any other big challenge uh, that, that are confronting us at the moment. Sure, sure, sir. So uh, the second question uh, is related to, so the brands right now have uh, gotten majority of their benefits uh, of Due to price increase versus volume uh, as a contribution, so from what I understand, that means that the brands are increasing their prices. So, is there uh, any scope for us also to be uh, looking at increasing the uh, average selling prices that uh, uh, we sell uh, to the brands? Uh, I, I, I wish we could do that. I don't think uh, that that is feasible because you know this is all based on demand and supply. And uh, most of the uh, brands are buying far less than uh, you know what uh, you know what what supply uh, ecosystem is. So at the moment there is you know in the market there is a bit of a, a price pressure on account of demand supply uh, consideration. So at the moment I don't foresee us being able to push uh, up our uh, selling prices. Understood. Understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Vikas from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for the follow-up. Sir, in one of the comments you mentioned about that uh, Bangladesh is also expected to take way hike. Uh, can you elaborate on this point? What are you hearing uh, and uh, what could be the extent of way hike that they could take? So it's all, uh, you know, the, the, see, the, the issue is Bangladesh has seen a very high degree of uh, inflation and uh, that's because their currency has dropped sharply and most of the consumable products that uh, Bangladesh consumes is all imported into Bangladesh. So, so you know, they, they have seen cost of living go up and there is, a, there is an election coming up in Bangladesh too. So there is a bit of a pressure to uh, offset some of that through, through wage hikes. The, the unions are negotiating with the government to reset the minimum wages. My sense is that it may be even be as high as 35-40% uh, wage increase uh, in that uh, in that country, the last wage hike which happened in Bangladesh happened, I guess, in 2018 or early 2019. So it's been a while since uh, wages have gone up and uh, inflation has eaten into real income. So so it will be high, pretty high, 35, 40 percent at at the, at the least, I suspect. 
sure. So, so my second question is with respect to the one one of expenses that you mentioned. Uh, can you broadly quantify how much uh, it could be going ahead in? So, so my sense is in uh, uh, third quarter we will have about uh, eight crores of uh, one-off expense. Uh, largely, it will be because of the uh, uh, payments to uh, the uh, these lawyers and the accountants, all for the due and and the bankers for all the due diligence and acquisition of Atraco. And and uh, and the smaller component of that will be for uh, GAPL star the uh, Mopal uh, multiple startup cost. I think that it would conclude by Q3, but we will have a uh, have approximately eight crores worth of uh, one-off cost in Q3. And I don't anticipate this continuing in Q4. Okay, right, right. And, and, and so the delayed, and you know some of the booking. Uh, get spread out, and in this eight crores will get split between Q3 and Q4. So I, it it depends on timing of closure of the acquisition. But as on that, you are not expecting uh, any delays in the progress, right? No, I, we are not expecting any delays, but it's all procedural. So, so you know, all the regulatory approvals, there are a lot of paperwork required and submissions required. So we're doing all of those, uh, and and it is going as per schedule. Right, sir. And sir, uh, uh, about our MP plant, uh, uh, of course, uh, we have commenced the operations in the phase one. Uh, when, when do we expect the phase two of the plant or any broad guidelines uh, of that to commence or yeah, to... Uh, yeah, so we have, we've already re released the uh, plant drawings for phase two and uh, we will soon commence construction. So my expectation is that phase two will start production sometime in FY25, in the later half of FY25. Right, right, right. And this the Tamil Nadu plant, uh, I believe that will also happen in phases, or it is like a one go we are doing it by the end of this year? It is a fabric mill, so it will happen in one go. Uh, there was a slight delay in the, in the construction uh, part of it as we had to change the configuration a bit and all of that for technical reasons. So we are anticipating that, uh, you know, instead of end of Q3, we may have to start that in uh, early Q4. This year. Early Q. Okay. Okay. And the ramp up of that will happen over a period of one year? That is an effort uh, you that, that will be about a year, year and a half. Yes, it will happen. Okay. Sure, sir. Sure. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Priyana Janjadwala from Elara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, just wanted to understand uh, what is the potential revenue for uh, the MP plant uh, phase one and phase two? So, so at, when it fully ramps up, we expect each phase to be about 170 to 175 crores. Okay, okay. And so you mentioned that uh, there are wage hikes uh, visible in China, Vietnam, Bangladesh. Uh, but at the same time, you were also looking at uh, setting up a, uh, or tying up with some facility in Bangladesh. Could you highlight uh, what are your plans now, um, given the increasing cost of in this economy? So, so, so we have not invested in Bangladesh as yet. Uh, you know, we, we have identified some assets, but we have not gone ahead. We will look at all the cost uh, cost elements and then take a final call on uh, investments. I still believe that Bangladesh will not lose its potential as a great garmenting destination because it continues to enjoy duty-free access to Europe. Uh, it will have abundance of labor and uh, the ability to quickly ramp up. So that will be the, the, the advantages which that, uh, that, that location enjoys uh, cannot be taken away from it. Also keep in mind that uh, Bangladeshi Taka has considerably uh, uh, declined vis-a-vis -vis US dollar. You know, it, it, it's, uh, it's fallen much more than uh, INR. So, so, you know, their cost competitiveness will continue to remain uh, going forward. 
So we will we will take a call. It's only the, the wage increase data will come in a month or so. So, so you know accordingly we'll do. But we are still committed to Bangladesh, subject to uh, uh, you know the 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 cost factors remaining reasonably good even after the wage hike. Okay, understood. Sir. And sir, um, uh, which other geographies are you looking at, or at this point in time, just focus on Atripo and uh, India expansion, guys? Correct. At the moment, it's only at RECO and expansion further in India. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Agarwal from VT Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, just wanted to understand where do we procure our raw materials from, and what has been the price trend on the of the raw materials of say? So, so we buy, you know, uh, we buy our fabric from various mills. So, so you know, we we buy from large mills like our Winburg Man, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so, a lot of uh, the mills are also dictated too by the brand. So, so they some of them are nominated fabric supply sources. Uh, depending on uh, you know the product type we make. So, for outerwear, we even import fabrics from uh, Far East. So, so okay. it, the, the fabric sources, the raw material sources are all different for different products. Uh, from a cost standpoint, compared to last year, there has been a slight uh, reduction in the uh, raw material cost. But at the end of the day, all of these are passed through, and uh, effectively the customer uh, uh, takes takes away the cost or gives in if the costs go up. Okay, so so if if your uh, if your raw material prices increase. After you've uh, agreed on an order with a customer, you can easily pass that on to to the client. That is correct. Am I, am I, I, oh, okay, okay, great. And uh, so, uh, if you could highlight, like, who are our major clients, uh, uh, like across globally? So we work with a lot of customers. Uh, you know, at, at this point, uh, you, you know, we we have customers like Gap, we have customers like Columbia, we have customers like Adidas, Puma. Uh, you know, Walmart, all these are our customers that we work with. Okay. And so we are mostly into cotton uh, products, right? Or are, are we into nylon and other and man-made fibers as well? We, when we do outerwear, we work with uh, polyester, nylon, and all those uh, uh, synthetic fibers too. Okay. And what would be the mix? Mix as in? Uh, like uh, like what percentage so, so of cotton? Historically we, historically, we have worked with about 40 percent of uh, our output as uh, outerwear. If you look at pure synthetics, the synthetic uh, uh, so contribution to our uh, fabric would be about 25 to 30 percent. Okay. And so, do we plan to take this increase? As given that there are many brands which are pledging to. Uh, get into completely uh, polyester or like move away from cotton completely. Uh, so are we planning to increase this going forward? It all depends on the fabric availability in India. So, so the synthetic ecosystem is not fully evolved in our country. So it will, uh, you know, if, if uh, and, and no brand moves away from one fiber to another, there will be demand for all of these uh, fibers. Typically, cotton and viscose, demand comes to India uh, and uh, you know polyester uh, and, and nylon and all these products are usually made out of uh, the Far East. So that's how historically it has played. We are an exception. We do uh, you know synthetic products too but by buying the fabric from uh, Far East. So it all depends on the product, customer and, and the type of business that we go after. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bijal Shah from RTL Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. thanks for the opportunity and apologies for my voice. Uh, my question is, see, the, the trade in apparel is almost like $500 million. However, I have not come across even a single company which has revenue of even $5 billion. So the question is, is there some natural limit to which an apparel manufacturer can grow? Or probably there are some other models which can be experimented and probably uh, $5 billion also kind of revenue is possible in long term. So, so yeah, since it's manpower intensive, uh, since it has got a very low uh, capital investment, especially in apparel, 
you will find that uh, the industry has a tendency to fragment. So, so, you know, when you reach a billion, two billion, etc., you will find that, uh, you know, there, there will not be, uh, there, there will be other players who are coming up, making the investments, competing on cost, etc. So, for example, Shenzo, which is a large player, is about three, three and a half billion in uh, revenue and uh, almost 10 billion in market cap. So, they are, they are, they are big ones. They have fabric and they are uh, very technically savvy and competent players. But yes, you're right, you haven't come across, you, you don't see a $5 billion player simply because the industry will fragment at that stage, at, at that level. Now, can can somebody consolidate it? Perhaps. So we will have to see how that evolves. Okay, the second uh, one question is, uh, I mean, you answered that some of the other market outside US are small, but if I see some of the Taiwanese players uh, are really doing good business in Japan, so, do you, I mean, beyond uh, US and maybe let's say if UKFT happens, uh, isn't there any market or isn't there any customer who really we can over some of me? So, so, you know, we, we look at any engagement at scale. So, if we get a customer, a large customer in some other geography who have the scale, then we would like to engage. So, so you know, we are not averse to any market. Japanese market has a very different set of protocols and you know requirements uh, to to satisfy. And uh, you know we we have served the Japanese market in the past, uh, and we continue to engage with uh, potential customers in all geographies, including Japan. So it all depends on the opportunity. We will uh, you know if if an opportunity makes financial sense to us, we will we will go ahead with that. Thank you. The next question is from the land of Harsh Mittal from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Good evening. Uh, I have one small question. I uh, just wanted to know what would be our annual garmenting capacity in FI24 and 25 from 36 million pieces in FI23. Thank you. It's capacity in pieces or what? What are you suggesting? What are you asking? In pieces. In pieces. It's, it's 30 million, a capacity increases in 30 million considering our product mix at this point of time. So that is 30 million as an FI23, right? Correct. And in FI24? It is, it doesn't, I mean, in, in, uh, in FI24. FI24 also remains the same except for another 5% you can add uh, for the new capacity which has come up in Bhopal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anush Kumar from Spark Asia Impact Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Thanks again for the opportunity. My question is on the PM Mitra part. Like, uh, how beneficial are we as a player, like a pure play garment exposed exporter, when you compare it with a, a player who is present across the value chain? So, what sort of benefits? like we get when you compare it with a player uh, who's already there uh, in across the country. So, so PL Mitra parks are, uh, you know, very large parks and situated in remote regions because of the requirement for a very large land bank. Uh, these parks are about 1,000 acres in size uh, and requires water availability and all of that. Largely, it is meant for fabric processing and some of those uh, related areas. Uh, garment manufacturing requires access to people or availability of people. So if we go and put up a factory in one of those PM Mitra parks, then we will have to also house people in dormitories because those the areas where the parks are may not have access to a lot of people. So, so at this moment, from a garment industry standpoint, I think we will continue to expand uh, in regions wherever uh, people are available at low cost and in abundance and not necessarily go after PM Mitra unless there are some uh, compelling advantages. Having said that, uh, you know, PM Mitra Pass also needs to be infrastructurally developed. It will take a couple of years before the infrastructure in those parks are fully developed. So the land has been acquired, but you know the land has to be developed, the roads have internal roads have to be put in, 
power, water infrastructure has to be brought in. So one of once those things come, we will also evaluate, uh, you know, setting up units in PM Mitra if if we still have access to people. Does that clarify? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the info. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Thank you so much. Yeah, we uh, at Gokuldas are always uh, focused on uh, ensuring execution excellence and we are working hard towards combating any of the uh, market related challenges. We continue to uh, look at uh, global events and uh, what impacts uh, retail purchases from, uh, from suppliers like us. We would uh, work towards staying competitive. Uh, we are working towards uh, improving our product portfolio so that uh, we always stay ahead of the uh, ahead of the uh, supplier base and always uh, should be able to grow at a much faster faster pace than uh, the rest of the industry. We will we will focus on this. We will focus on ramping up the newer capacities that that will come up. And we are razor sharp focused on uh, securing our margins and protecting it. Uh, as, as usual, we will continue to uh, work towards uh, strong growth. Our acquisition uh, of a TRACO, which once uh, it comes into play, will also require us to uh, integrate and grow. We're confident that uh, we should be able to do it. We have done a lot of background work uh, already uh, in anticipation of uh, the uh, the approvals that we will get, and we are confident that we should be able to integrate that uh, very comfortably into our operations, so that that will also yield growth going forward into the future. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, you know asking the questions and supporting Gokulda's exports.